Good morning. Welcome to Sunday Square Off and our special annual Arizona Book Show. We're featuring two books by Arizona authors and a third book on a controversial Arizona issue. You'll hear from Pulitzer Prize winning reporter John Carreyrou on his book, Bad Blood. He documents the Theranos scandal. That's the blood testing fraud that got a big hand from Arizona in bamboozling consumers and investors. Phoenix author Andrea Avery shares her memoir, Sonata, about remaking a life after losing her greatest gift. And then I talked to ASU professor Kyle Longley about President Lyndon Johnson and America's nightmare year, 1968. But first, Governor Doug Ducey and state lawmakers welcomed Elizabeth Holmes to Arizona in 2015 with a law unlike any in the country. Holmes' company, Theranos, was peddling a supposedly groundbreaking technology that could perform hundreds of blood tests on a pinprick worth of blood from your finger. Under that Arizona law, you wouldn't need a doctor's note to get that test. The Wall Street Journal's John Carreyrou uncovered the Theranos fraud. In a recent interview, Carrie Rue told me that Arizona law let the company use Arizona consumers in a kind of lab experiment and gave Theranos a huge boost in selling a product that he says was a sham. It, it was a big deal in several senses. Uh, one was uh, it was the pilot market. Uh, for for Theranos, so uh, so it, Arizona was kind of the guinea pig. Absolutely, people here. It, it was uh, it, it was a, a giant, as I've called it, a giant unauthorized experiment on Arizona consumers, and it enabled uh, the company start to start rolling out its blood testing services in Walgreens stores. And the plan was to uh, soon after the Arizona rollout start rolling out nationally in all of uh, Walgreens' more than 8,000 stores. The other way in which it was important is. Uh, Elizabeth Holmes used it uh, as the validation that her technology was real and works. She went to prospective investors. The, the thing to remember is, Arizo is Theranos raised mo most of its money after 2013, after going live in Arizona with its blood tests. So she was able to go to these billionaire investors that she lured in 2013, 2014, and 2015 with uh, the assertion that, that this technology worked. And how could it not? It's already commercially rolled out it's it's people are using it in, in Arizona whoa is there any evidence that Arizona our governor our legislators the lobbyists who push this actually vetted this product there's no evidence whatsoever that anyone in Arizona did any vetting um, but in Arizona's defense I would say um, like the the billionaire investors who sunk hundreds of millions of dollars into Theranos they thought that if the company had gone live in Walgreens stores with the technology, surely its retail partner, Walgreens, based in a Chicago suburb, a, a, an upstanding company that's been around for more than 100 years, surely it had done its homework and surely it had vetted the technology. And as I reveal in my book, Walgreens had actually not vetted the technology at all. So everybody's looking at each other and saying, well, they vetted it and they vetted it, that's but in right. the end, Nobody vetted That's it. That's right. Walgreens did hire in 2010 a consultant, a laboratory expert, to help it vet it uh, and uh, ended up uh, holding him at arm's length. Uh, Elizabeth uh, Holmes and her boyfriend, Sonny Balwani, who was the number two of the company, uh, told Walgreens that uh, it didn't want this consultant to be uh, attending meetings anymore because he was asking questions that made them uncomfortable and they got him excluded from meetings. What was the risk to Arizona patients who used this blood test and trusted it? Right, the, the risks were considerable. I mean, the, the two scenarios uh, that, that you don't want are a missed uh, diagnosis. Um, you know, someone who's, say, heart disease is, isn't diagnosed and, and then they go on to have a heart attack. And in fact, um, a patient uh, who had uh, Theranos blood test is alleging just that, that he had some uh, uh, tests from Theranos that didn't reveal his heart disease and he went on to have a heart attack a few weeks later. And then the other scenario is uh, a, a, a wrong, uh, a false uh, positive that tells you you have a condition for which you then seek treatment when in fact you didn't have the condition and so it becomes an unnecessary procedure or, or an unnecessary treatment. And both of those scenarios can be very dangerous. Did you uncover anything that shows that Elizabeth Holmes and her colleagues knew they were scamming the state, patients, investors, the whole crowd. Right, they absolutely knew, and she and her boyfriend, who was the number two of the company, absolutely knew 
that they were scamming the state because uh, the, the Edison, the, the, the converted glue robot, uh, which they used in their lab, could only handle uh, about 12 tests. And they had 250 tests on their menu. So the other, some 238 tests, they ran with commercial machines. But because they wanted to uphold this, this myth that they were testing tiny samples of blood pricked from the finger, what they did is they hacked the commercial machines and modified them. And uh, they diluted the blood to create more volume so that the commercial machines made by the likes of Siemens could then handle uh, these blood samples. And of course, when you dilute the, the blood, you, you alter it, you adulterate it, and, and you create more room for error. And in the end, uh, Theranos had to void or correct almost 900,000 test results in Arizona. And shortly after that interview, Theranos founder Elizabeth Holmes was charged with defrauding investors, doctors, and patients. Meantime, in federal court in Phoenix, nine Arizona residents are suing the company and Walgreens in a class action suit. When we come back, a new book on the nightmare year, 1968.